Hey guys, 22 Plinkster here. It is time for the review on the Black Pearl. Now you may have seen uh, a couple of videos of me doing some trick shots with this particular handgun in the past couple of weeks. One of those being the bottle where I split the playing card and the bottles fell down and it was pretty cool. I thought it was cool anyways. And the other one is actually I shot through a 22 long rifle barrel, a Smith & Wesson barrel with this handgun. A lot of you guys wanted to see the review. The whole intentions of me building this pistol is to give you guys a review on it. But before we go over anything on this handgun, let's give it a few shots down range. Got my magazines loaded up here with some CCI standard velocity ammunition. And let's just go right here on this rack first. All right, all right, she shoots, she runs. Now, the reason why I called it the Black Pearl is pretty obvious, it's all black. I always wanted a blacked out uh, handgun. Now, if you're curious of what this actually originated from, if you remember my video I did on the Ruger Mark IV 2245 Lite, probably about a year ago, this is it. This is that handgun. Well, more or less the, the handgun. The only thing that left on this particular setup that is still Ruger is the polymer frame, the 2245 polymer frame here, and some of the bolt. That's it. All right, now let me go over a few of the things that stand out on this handgun because pretty much I've replaced everything on it and it's kind of a lot of information. Let's get into it. First and foremost, the barrel, okay? Uh, this is Vakortsen's LLV six inch barrel. The Vakortsen LLV barrels come in four and a half and also six inch. Now you get a lot of features on this particular barrel. This particular one is the six inch and they also make a four and a half inch. If you've seen my ultimate Ruger Mark IV video, you have seen the four and a half inch, but this is the six inch. And also um, on the end here is Vakortsen's compensator. This compensator does a wonderful, wonderful job of keeping the muzzle down. Uh, other things on this handgun is designed to take some of the recoil and the muzzle flip out. And I know you're probably saying, why in the world do you wanna take some of the muzzle flip out of a 22 long rifle? It's a 22 long rifle. Well, this is not your backyard plinker, okay? This is set up for competition. Uh, it could be set up for like bullseye matches. And when you're shooting speed, just, uh, just a fraction of an inch of muzzle flip can cost you winning or losing a uh, match that you may be shooting because you want to get on your target as soon as possible. So if you can minimize that muzzle flip as much as you can, uh, you have a better chance of winning. But this compensator does very, very well um, of keeping that barrel down when you shoot. And also it has an integrated rail right here on the top so you can mount you a red dot um, or anything that you want to mount. And right here is Vakortsen's um, tried and true sights. Okay, these sights are fully adjustable for windage and elevation. They are blacked out sights, target sights, very, very, very good sights. Um, I highly recommend them. On top of here, we have a Leopold Delta Point Pro. Now this is a one MOA uh, red dot and I prefer a one MOA red dot when I shoot precision. I don't like a three MOA or a five MOA and certainly not like a nine MOA, but this is a one MOA red dot. And I, I've been using the, the Delta Point Pros for a couple of months now, and I'm really, really becoming very fond of them. Um, I like the sharpness of the red dot and I like the clarity of the screen. Now that we went over everything from here to there and from down here up on this handgun, it's a lot of information on this setup. I've built a lot of stuff in here. Let's shoot some more targets down range. All right, I got another magazine loaded up. Let's start right here with the challenge target dueling tree. All right, I think I've got a few more rounds loaded up. Let's go a little bit longer range here. Let's go. Let's go at 60 yards on that plate on the left. Can you hardly? Can you hardly hear that 22 hitting that target? But this handgun will flat out shoot. 
All right, now let's go over, I guess, let's finish the upper half of the handgun. This right here is the Tandem Cross Halo. The reason why I put this Tandem Cross Halo on the back of my uh, Mark pistols is it's pretty simple. It's very, very easy to find this loop, pull it back and, you know, put another round in the chamber. In case if you do have a misfire or a failure to feed, it's very easy to just to grab it and pull it back with one finger. Also, if you have uh, you know, arthritis in your hands or if you have a weak grip and it's hard to grab the sides of these little bolts, these little ears on the side of a Mark pistol, a Mark series pistol, this Tandem Cross Halo does very, very, very well. Like I mentioned before, it is on a 2245 frame. If you don't know what a 2245 frame, it's basically the same grip angle as a 1911, okay? It's not like your other Ruger standard uh, grip angle uh, on their other Mark series pistol. This is the same grip angle of a 1911. So if you have a 1911 and you want a good trainer gun, you know, you may want to consider the, the 2245. The grips, these are the Tandem Cross Hive grips. These are the new grips for the 2245. I really like these grips. They're very soft rubber and they have molded out here on the front for your finger grooves so you can get a really really good purchase it just feels very well in your hand uh, these grips aren't very expensive and they are light years above and beyond the factory grips grips that you can get on the uh, mark 2245 uh, mark 4. another cool little feature on this handgun are these two rest okay a lot of times people have problems where to put their thumbs when shooting a semi-automatic pistol uh, you know you both want to have your your thumbs forward like this right here and these are thumb ledges uh, that you can put your left and your right hand thumb this one right here is stationary and it does not move and it's basically you replace the bolt uh, that locks in uh, the tongue for the upper receiver and you have to push out the pin that holds down the trigger bar and everything else. Uh, it takes a little while to install, but Tandem Cross sent me these both of these thumb ledges to try out. And I tell you what, I'm going to probably replace them on my other 2245s that I have because I really like them. My thumbs don't slide. And when you're locked in with these grips and you're locked in pressing down on these thumb rests, it locks the handgun in very, very well to your hands. Also, this rear one is the safety. So it's very easy to get up if you're shooting a competition it's just brush your finger down or your thumb down on the safety here to take it on and off safety so that is a very very good feature and plus it gives you some room to put your thumbs and they're not dancing all around the handgun when you're shooting it next on the list is the trigger now inside of this 2245 i have a vacortson accurizing kit okay that replaces the sear and also the uh, the bar it also replaces the hammer and if you've ever shot a uh, vacortson trigger in a mark series pistol you know it is a must they're i think they're around 140 150 dollars somewhere around there but it will take a five and a half to six pound trigger down to like a two to two and a half pound trigger and you can adjust your uh, the, the take up on the trigger and also the over travel. Now, this is not a Vakortsen trigger face. Now, I do have the Vakortsen accurizing kit inside of this handgun, but I wanted to try something. This is actually the tandem cross trigger face, okay? Just the trigger part, non, none of the internals. The tandem cross trigger face, you can just replace that on your Mark IV without replacing any of the other stuff. You can just get a different flat face trigger face. Uh, but if you do that, it does not lower the poundage of the trigger one bit. So you're still stuck with a five and a half pound trigger. But if you parry this trigger face with the accurizing kit from Vakorsen, winner, winner, chicken dinner, it's a good setup. Um, I'm trying it out. I'm, I'm liking it. I don't know if I like it better than the regular Vakortsen trigger that the Accurizing kit comes with. But if you like a flat face trigger, uh, you will enjoy this trigger. When I received this handgun and I replaced everything that you see here, also, I forgot to mention inside the bolt here, this is a Ruger factory bolt, but not everything inside of it 
is Ruger. I actually replaced the firing pin with a Vokortsen firing pin and a Vokortsen extractor. So I always do that uh, when I build a gun. I want to go with a good firing pin and a good extractor. So because you're only as you know strong as your weakest link. If you spend all the money on here, the extractor and firing pins not very much. You might as well replace them and get a much higher quality than the Ruger factory firing pin and extractor. But when I first got the handgun, I replaced all of this stuff and it would not work. It was very, very frustrating. Um, I, what would happen was the magazine would not seat very deep. It would click, it would stay in, but the bolt would ride right over top of the rounds. It would not pick up the round inside of the magazine to chamber it time and time and time again. It just would not work. And to find out what the problem was, was a magazine release. The magazine release was not locking, the, the Ruger factory magazine release was not locking this magazine up tight and allowing the bolt to pick up a round to put it into the chamber. So once I replaced this magazine release, uh, the standard Ruger magazine release with the Vakortsen magazine release, no problems, no problem. This magazine locks up extremely tight. It picks up every single round. It does what it's supposed to do now. I've blabbed about this handgun long enough. This is a race gun. Let's shoot it. All right, let's start over here on these red plates. All right, let's go out there at 100 yards with it. That's almost like boring <laughs> with this handgun at 100 yards. All right, let's go over a few things that I missed. I forgot to mention that the barrel is of course threaded. I mentioned the comp on the end of it. The barrel is threaded half by 28. So if you want to throw you a suppressor on there, by all means, throw you a suppressor. Usually when I'm doing videos like this, I usually throw a can on there, but uh, for this one, I'm not, but it is threaded half by 28. So if you wanted to throw a can and man, if you threw a suppressor on there, this thing would be like two foot long, but with a six inch barrel, but that's all right. Now, the other thing that I do need to mention is right underneath here you do have your tack rail and usually i mentioned in videos that you can throw a laser flashlight nunchucks ninja star bow staff kumquat apple pear whatever you want to on the bottom of this rail well i so happen to have a crimson trace uh, a laser flashlight combo this is the rail master and i do not or did not to this point have a 22 long rifle that had a laser or a flashlight mounted on the bottom of the rail. And I live out in the country, I live on a farm, and sometimes you have to do you know, pest control at night. And so I was always looking for a flashlight or knew where the flashlights were, but I had to go get it and go get the handgun uh, to do some critter control at night. But now with this guy right here, I've got a flashlight and laser all mounted right here underneath it. So it works out perfect. I really like the Trailmaster Pro from Crimson Trace, but it's got a green laser on it, it's pretty cool. I don't know if you can see it on my hand or not, but it's about a 300 lumen flashlight with a green laser and I'm kind of digging a little bit. I think we've went over everything that is on the Black Pearl, but you know, between the, the upper and the optic and you know, the fixed sights, if you want to use that and the bolt and the tandem cross halo and the Vakorts and trigger and you know, the Railmaster Pro and the grips and the magazine release. I think we've went over everything. Let's do some more shooting now. I went with the six inch barrel on this for a, a reason. Like I said before, I have the four and a half inch already, but the six inch, if you're looking into, I get this question a lot, let me back up a little bit, but if you're looking to go into some bullseye shooting, okay, meaning shooting that you are not in a real big hurry and you wanna make some precise shots, always like a longer barrel uh, because they're a little bit more forgiving than a shorter barrel. They're a little bit easier to shoot. It's not that they're not, uh, you know, it's not that they're more accurate or anything, but you do get a longer sight radius, especially if you're shooting open sights. A longer barrel, you'll be able to shoot it better at longer distances, usually. But I went with the six inch barrel on that. Now I've got down here a uh, challenge target, bullseye target. I did a video on that target Good grief, probably about four years ago. And if you're familiar with that target, I actually helped design that target for Challenge Target. Inside of there is a three quarter inch hole and you've got to go hey diddle diddle right down the middle 
to make that paddle flip. And I hope this red dot is sighted in well enough where I can hit it once or twice, but, and I'm about, probably about 45 feet away from it. Let me see if I can hit it a few times. Going a little bit to the left, I see. Don't have that red dot sighted right on. Let me go over a little bit to the right. There we go. Let's keep going to the left. All right. Let me aim a little bit farther to the right. I should do a little bit better than that. Should have sighted this red dot in a little bit better before the video. Too much to the right. Oh! All right, there we go. I finally found my groove. Oh, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions on the Black Pearl, ask them down below. Go over to my Facebook page, Instagram, or Twitter page and ask them there. Until next time, y'all be safe and keep blinking. Mm -hmm.